Hi, welcome to Wellness. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show you the very best your community has to offer in health, fitness, well-being, amazing events, and great people. Today, I am joined by Dr. Brian Yotis, who is a chiropractor of 20 years, and he has a very unique approach to share with us today. Welcome, Dr. Yotis. Hello. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, so, I'm a chiropractor. Uh, I specialize in sports injury management. But the approach that we take within the practice is a real holistic and collaborative approach. Mm -hmm. So we bring in other practitioners to create a bigger value and much better product for sure. our clients, our patients, sure. uh, where we incorporate chiropractic, exercise, fitness, uh, functional medicine, nutrition, right. massage, acupuncture, right. all of those so that we can really take a better look mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. how everybody functions in their activities of daily living sure. and provide the best support for them in doing the things that they really want to do. Right, which is wonderful. And you have uh, two offices right now. One is in White Plains and the other is right in Katona. Right? Yes. Um, in Katona, we, I operate out of a fitness facility. Yes. So we it's have beautiful. access to 16,000 square feet of yes. exercise uh, equipment and uh, multi-purpose rooms. Uh, so we right. utilize that, have access to utilize that with the patients there. Sure. Um, and in White sure. Plains, we have that, like I said, more collaborative approach where we're going to be having multiple practitioners in there so we can address multiple issues that patients might come in with and take mm -hmm. that real holistic approach. That's that's absolutely wonderful. So I know with exercise, um, I train and I lift weights. So, so what is the important protocol in terms of before and after um, when you do that? Well, a lot of people look to stretching. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, um, what we like to do is we like to activate those muscles. We want right. to get the joints to move. Okay. We want to activate the muscles, getting them to relax and contract. Sure. Um, where now you start to get those joints to move brings blood flow into the area, which helps to stimulate pliability, flexibility, and mobility. So doing some active stretching, which mm -hmm. is generally taking, again, those muscles through that contraction relaxation phase to stimulate blood flow, Interesting. activates the muscles, prepares the body for exercise. Sure. And then afterward, you want to maintain that length when those muscles are full of blood, uh -huh. doing some passive stretching to help to maintain the length of those muscles. Okay. So that's typically the protocols that we use with most patients. You do. And how many minutes would you say is, is important allocation of time prior to exercise um, it could be five to ten minutes, really, okay. of warm-up time. Um, a typical stretch, static stretch, um, you want to hold for about 30 seconds. Okay. Your muscles react to the stretch. Mm -hmm. So to get that re that reaction to dissipate and allow that mus muscle to start to lengthen right. takes about 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. So a 30-second hold on a static stretch is okay. usually most effective. Right. Um, but active stretching, we go through those ranges of motion, working in sets of 10 to 20 okay. with low resistance or no resistance so the muscle can just sure. go through that functional phase. Right. And is both before and after. Yep. Absolutely. And since you walk the walk and talk, the talk and are training for uh, a marathon and in yeah. for your charity Parkinson's. Yes. Um, what do you think is the essential things in terms of running? In terms of training for running, is it the same as far as stretching? Or? Um, yes. So you want okay. to again, you want to activate the muscles that you're going to be using when you're running before you you know start that run and right. start that training. Right. You want to have a good cool down process where you allow that blood flow to start to dissipate the muscles to maintain their length while they're cooling down. You don't want an abrupt cool down where those muscles start to shorten and tighten interesting. up. Very training interesting. wise, you want to keep training at a nice low, moderate level, especially for distances like sure. that. Sure. Will you kick up intensities on periodic basis sure. so you can improve that performance? Right. But right. most of the training is kind of at an even pace and even keel. Right. Yeah. So this the New York Marathon, how many miles is it? It's twenty six point two miles. <laughs> yep. Yep. Something to strive for, to work towards, yep. right? Yep. So um, what I am extremely impressed is in terms of everything you've brought together, it's extremely essential that rather than working independently, bringing that cohesive nature of people working together as a team cre creates the best means for each patient. A absolutely. To get the best. Um, yeah. Like I said, I focus on sports injury management and activity exercise. Uh -huh. um, but nutrition's not necessarily my wheelhouse. Sure. So what we want to do is we want to have access to the best practitioners right. um, and giving the patients the opportunity to work with the best person that really focuses on nutrition when that's sure. a need. Sure. Um, exercise protocols, you know, we can do testing that can look at um, blood pressure, heart rate, mm -hmm. um, VO2 max, which is how much oxygen your blood can carry sure. while you're doing exercise. Right. So having people that do those tests, perform those tests, and can evaluate them. Mm -hmm. We utilize all those things to 
uh, create efficiency and optimize treatment within the within the office. Right, and uh, and the woman who who is working in functional medicine with nutrition, Doctor Amy, uh, Amy Pearson. Yep. That's that's amazing, yep. amazing to have that level working in in combination yep. with She's you. She's a fantastic practitioner that has a great why. That's great, um, and really brings that passion to what she does to really that's help great. our patients, you know, to the next level. No, that's that's good. So um, we're in the midst right now of talking about Doctor Coronavirus, <laughs> yeah. and I wanted to know if you could just uh, share with my viewers some basic tips that are extremely essential because yep. I believe I believe always um, when I was a scientist prior to my graduate work in, in terms of my teaching and education RDs that knowledge is power because mm -hmm. if we have knowledge we have the power to not panic but be aware of our situation and do the very best to, to right. prepare. Well that's one of the big things is we don't want to panic okay um, stress can actually help to you know or can reduce um, your defense mm -hmm. because it increases stress, increases cortisol, which increases um, your ability to contract mm -hmm. the disease. Sure. So we want to remember that the coronavirus is like any other virus, even though the symptomatology can be worse, mm -hmm. like any other virus where the best thing is to create a defense against it right. and keep your body healthy. Right. So we want to keep clean environments. So washing your hands, washing your hands for 20 seconds, Antibacterial soaps would be important in that situation. Mm -hmm. Wiping surfaces clean with um, antibacterial cleaners mm -hmm. can be very helpful. Right. Um, but most important, you want to get as much rest as you can. Right. Sleeping, that's going to keep you healthy. You want to continue to exercise mm -hmm. to a point where you're not going to overstress your body, but you keep the body active. You imp improve blood flow and right. lymph flow, which is going to help your inflammatory right. um, react or your um, remove the toxins. You, right, exactly. Right. You're going to remove toxins, right. um, but you're going to increase your defenses. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Your um, army, so right. to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, nutrition is important. Sure. You want to make sure that you're eating enough. You want to keep nutrients in your body. Right. So again, keeping your, your body healthy. Sure. So it's really trying to be as healthy as you can because your body has that natural ability to fight the virus. Mm -hmm. It's just making sure that it's strong enough to do so. Right. Um, right. Chiropractic. I'm going to Put sure. a little bit of plug in of there, chiropractically. Right. Um, right. You know, chiropractic has a close relationship with your central nervous system. Uh -huh. That's really what controls um, your immune system. Right. So if we can help from a chiropractic standpoint right. with that holistic approach that we were talking about before, that's going to help to boost your immune system as well. Right. So getting right. adjusted can really help to boost your immune system and also help to fight the virus as well. So it's, a, it's all the things combined. And also in terms of in crowds, as far as if you're coughing or sneezing to cover, to cover right. it. Right. So or, in the, you know, right. you want to try to avoid those large crowds because right. that's where you're really going to become in contact with it. Right. Um, but right. You, again, washing your hands. Mm -hmm. You want to watch touching your face. Um, anybody that's sneezing, coughing, you want to try to avoid. Right. You want to also control your own sneezing and coughing. Right. So taking good protocols around that and right. trying not to put the viruses, you know, out there. Sure. No, I appreciate you sharing that with my viewers. It's extremely important. And as far as uh, something simple, as far as washing hands, saying happy birthday and, yep. <laughs> and try to wash in between your fingers, your front and the back of your hand, as well as wait for the whole time to thoroughly mm -hmm. and then immediately let the, letting them dry, but using a very clean paper towel and immediately disposing of it, as well as yep. what Dr. Yoda says in terms of hand sanitizers. Yep. That immediately you yeah. can use when you don't have the ability to wash And that's to what wash I was going to say is when you don't right. have the ability to wash your hands right. or um, you can use those hand sanitizers in more of an immediate moment when they're right. accessible. I appreciate you sharing that. I really do. So um, what do you think is the most important thing in terms of exercise? Do you think uh, it's important to split it up as far as weight training and then cardiovascular, aerobically and anaerobically? Well, yeah, there's definitely benefits to um, both cardiovascular and um, strength and weight training. Mm -hmm. um, cardiovascular is going to help to improve that cardiovascular component, right. but it helps to provide endurance for your body. Right. It's also going to stimulate your musculoskeletal system. Right. So cardiovascular exercise is important. So we look to two or three times a week that we want people to okay. simply even just take a walk mm -hmm. for about 20 minutes. So that's going to stimulate blood flow. It's going to help to increase your heart rate, sustain your heart rate for a period of time, right. which is going to help your conditioning. Okay. Um, body weight or resistance training mm -hmm. 
helps to improve muscle strength, mm -hmm. endurance, and stability. Right. So that's going to help with proper posture, mm -hmm. keeping things in alignment. Mm -hmm. It's going to help to train your body and condition your body for the things that you do every day. Right. Um, you could have somebody that is sitting at a desk for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Well, when they hit a point of fatigue, their posture is going to change. Their shoulders are going to start to slump. They're going to kind of sit into the chair. Right. Puts a lot of stress on your neck, your back. Sure. So those are people that we see with some of those injuries, that chronic neck pain, that chronic back pain. Right. So resistance training, body weight, right. you know, exercises right. can really help with that. Okay. Then from your athletic standpoint or people that want to be active, right. they want to take that activity to another level because sure. they're challenging themselves. Sure. So the stress on the body forces the body to become stronger and improve. So it's going to make you more adaptable and more able to tolerate the resistance and the stress that you put on your body from that competitive environment. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I can't thank you enough for sharing all that today. This is such essential information to know. Well, thank you again for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. It's my pleasure. Good luck with training for that marathon uh, for Parkinson's disease. Thank you. Good luck with that. Uh, remember, everyone, in terms of the coronavirus, as Dr. Yotis has uh, shared with us, it's extremely important to wash your hands thoroughly, 20 minutes, to use hand sanitizers when you don't have that present, to keep your body healthy the very best you can with healthy food, mobility and exercise, and sleep. And as well, take it slow, be aware, and prepare. But also remember that just the key to nutrition, mobility, good health, and chiropractic alignments can greatly help us to be the very best we can be. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to my wonderful crew. Have a good night.